KCOD Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and KCOD.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're going in-depth on the ballot questions in advance of the November 4th election. In this segment, we're talking about questions. Question one, which would eliminate gas tax indexing. Speaking against eliminating gas tax indexing is Wendy Northcross, Chief Executive Officer of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Recently, the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce board came out against this ballot question, and I think some people may have been surprised. Why don't we start with you explaining what the process was for the chamber to weigh in on the ballot questions? Sure. We have a very robust public policy process that we follow very, very closely at the Cape Cod Chamber. We have a 30-member board of directors. Those board members are actually elected by the membership every year at our annual meeting. And our board actually organizes itself into four different areas of work. So public policy is one of those four areas. And we have great participation from our boards. And we have great, um, I guess you could say, community relationships. So when this whole issue of the ballot questions came up, we were approached by uh, people on both sides of the issues to try to look at the ballot questions and see if we would weigh in. And in fact, on this very particular question number one, we did run it through our our pretty rigorous process. And so focusing in on on the question and the discussions that went on, how did that discussion go? And you said there were people on both sides. So so how did you come around to to the opinion that you did? So we had been um, asked by people that are you know, supporting some of the transportation projects that the Cape Cod Chamber has historically supported, they came to us and said there's a potential that the revenue stream that could fund some of these um, projects and fix things or start new services could be in jeopardy if the gas tax index were to be repealed. Um, we, you know, had people on the other side of the issue, too, saying you need to look at repealing the index. It's not good that it would just automatically increase. So our public policy pillar got informed. We got information on both sides of the issue. We took a long, hard look at that. Uh, we presented a position to our board of directors, actually first to our executive committee and then to our full board of directors, who in the end did actually adopt a position um, regarding ballot question number one. And really came down on the um, opposing side of, of getting rid of the, the tax index. Part of that is because Cape Cod's infrastructure needs are so pressing. And part of that is because we see this revenue stream as enabling some new services into the future. Now, when you polled, did you poll your members on this uh, particular question? Because I know you do do some polling. Right. We do um, We do not poll our members on every policy position that we take, but we do an annual survey of our members, and we ask a whole array of questions on topics like, uh, you know, destination marketing, public infrastructure, um, things like wastewater have re- really ranked very, very high in the last few years. Our members are very concerned about the protection of the natural environment because they realize it's so um, inextricably linked to our tourism industry, to our retirement industry, and keeping this place beautiful and and well-functioning is really important to our members. So knowing how they have felt in our annual survey, especially on topics like trying to get over the canal with some um, regular predictability and have some plan for our aging canal bridges, that's been also ranking very high, as has the um, concept of the Cape Flyer, that rail service from Boston. They would like to see that expanded. And they also are very concerned about having a good ride-to-work system with the Regional Transit Authority as well as bike paths, bike signages that's been um, enabled through some of the very funds that are now being in question. 
I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. We're talking about the ballot questions in advance of the November 4th election, giving listeners both sides of each question. In this segment, I'm talking to Wendy Northcrofts, CEO of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, whose board voted recently to come out against the ballot question one, which would eliminate gas tax indexing. Now, people who are on the other side of this question who, who want to eliminate the gas mm-hmm. tax indexing say their main issue is not really the the gas tax per se, but the indexing, the fact that the tax would be linked to inflation and therefore could go up automatically without a vote. How do you respond to those concerns? And that's a great um, you know, nuance to this entire issue that we talked about at some length. And quite honestly, we believe that with the um, continued growth of electric automobiles and the continued popularity of mass transportation options and that people are just being more sensible about how they drive and, <clears throat> you know, what kind of cars that they drive. There's going to be actually more fuel efficiency in our future, which will probably continue to decrease the amount of gas tax that's collected anyway. We think that indexing something to a predictable number m- makes a lot of sense. We do it with Social Security. Social Security payments are indexed to the Consumer Price Index, the same um, tool to measure that the tax would be applied to. And because we have one of the lowest gas tax rates in the nation, um, you know, for it to go up a little bit as everything else rises a little bit, including wages, um, we think that makes some sense. But we think that really and truly over the long term, the gas tax is probably going to not be a major uh, burden, I would say. I think that having having it be able to float. Now, there is accountability. The legislature cannot take this money and use it for anything other than transportation projects. We have a dire need across the state, never mind what Cape Codders need and want. You know, we need uh, fixed bridges across the canal. We want rail service to be more regular. We want bike paths and bike signage to be uh, prevalent all across the Cape. And that has to come from some resource, and we think it's the gas tax. And getting into this question of the indexing a little more, when you talk to people on the other side, the term that they use a lot is that the legislators don't have the courage to vote to raise the gas tax. That's why the people in favor of this ballot question, they want the indexing eliminated. They don't want the indexing. And how do you respond to that argument that they really want the legislators to take this vote if they want to raise this tax? Well, quite honestly, what we believe is that the um, legislature has a lot of things on their plate and a lot of things that they need to pay attention to. Certainly, they they, they can look at and monitor um, the revenue streams for the Commonwealth and change them at any given time. But if something is working and they can and know that there's an, a regular anticipated um, revenue stream, it's going to make it far easier for the state of Massachusetts to do the bonding that it needs to do to be able to generate the money to do the massive projects. Without these infrastructure projects, our economy just doesn't work as well as it should. And we have dire needs in this state. So I do think the legislature, which has been highly accountable, which put into place a very um, well-functioning mechanism for this tax can at any time, of course, eliminate it if they want to. But I think that have some tie that says, yes, uh, there will be a gas tax, and yes, it will move in a predictable fashion as other um, you know, pieces of the economy move. To us, that just seemed like a rational request. And the other thing that people on the other side say is that the problem is not really about having a high enough gas tax, but about having enough money and that the state really has a spending problem. And how do you address that coming from your side? Well, I think the state has had a spending problem. The state has had um, limited resources to meet state needs. And what we have done is we've deferred the maintenance on a lot of the infrastructure that we depend on to make a living. Our economy works on rail railroads and on roadways and on bridges and to a large extent, our economy on the Cape works on bike paths and other forms of transportation that get people to work other than their automobile. We have, we have 
a crying need in the state to make those functioning better. Just look at the issues that we have with the canal bridges. They're under chronic maintenance now. Every two years, there's a major maintenance project that reduces the amount of capacity on those bridges. And that has an effect on our ability to make a living. And that can be easily remedied. Again, if we have a revenue stream, again, lowest, some of the lowest gas taxes in the nation, but let's tie it to the CPI just as we have with other um, benefit programs like Social Security, then we know where it's going. We can adequately bond. We can ad- adequately repair and maintain our infrastructure so that we can adequately maintain our, our wages and our way of living. Another argument from the other side, they say that the last time the gas taxes were increased, the money was diverted from road repair to other uses. And and you had mentioned earlier that this will really be targeted to those transportation uses. How do you address that that diversion that's happened in the past? I can't speak to the past on that. Um, I don't have personal knowledge of that per se. But what we do understand with the current situation is that funding is there um, in its current iteration cannot be used for anything other than transportation infrastructure. And we vote yes for transportation infrastructure. Now, if some major recession or depression comes upon the state again and they have to make hard decisions, uh, the legislature has that ability to do that. They always have. They always will. But we think in this case, our leaders have put forth um, a rational explanation and a rational uh, nexus between where the revenue comes from and what it's going to fix. You can have the lowest gas tax in the nation, but if you can't drive on your roadways, uh, I don't know what the point is. Now, the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce is obviously pro-business, and usually that means anti-taxes. Now, when you came out with this decision, um, did you hear from a lot of people questioning you on it? Um, A few people reacted. uh, You know, we tried to to get out there into the community ahead of time and and to say, you know, there are some interesting ballot questions. We don't necessarily agree that ballot questions are a great way to govern. Uh, quite honestly, it's what we elect people to um, Boston to do. Um, <clears throat> but we have these ballot questions. We took a hard look at some of them. And balancing the CAPE's needs with these potential revenue streams, we said we're going to come up with what's probably unusual for a pro-business organization, and we're going to support the idea of having a, a sufficient and predictable revenue stream for our transportation infrastructure, especially when we're in in need of new rail service or expanded rail service, bus service, you know, for people to get to work, and our bridge and road issues. So. Uh, we stand ready as these ballot questions get decided and as these revenue streams are either preserved or changed, <clears throat> we're going to fight for regional equity every step of the way. Cape Cod has a very major part to play in the taxes that are generated here and sent to Boston compared to what gets sent back. We are we stand ready to fight to get Cape Cod share for these transportation projects. And unfortunately, we're out of time. I've been talking to Wendy Northcross, CEO of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Wendy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. We've been talking about the Chamber's stance on gas tax indexing, which is ballot question one at the upcoming election on November 4th. The Chamber is in favor of gas tax indexing, meaning against the ballot question. To hear interviews on all the other ballot questions, as well as interviews with candidates in contested local races, go to capecod.com and click on the election banner. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.